You're watching Back of the Room here with Matthew Gill. We're in the Hollywood Hills with Whitney Cumming. Whitney Cummings, thank you so much for being here. It's glamorous up here, isn't it's it? It's very glamorous. <laughs> uh, we won't go into it. We just had a 6.0 earthquake. Oh, did and, we? Yes, we did. Oh. Yeah, just about 20 minutes ago. I don't care. That's how dialed in yeah. <laughs> she is right now. She's just like, whatever. There's like, a, you can't see right now, but we're like in her writing room, and there's like written material all over just the place. Chaos. Just like. Uh, that's lots of pictures is. of me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. The, the nude in the front door was a little weird. I was like, a black and white of you? I'm like, come on now. <laughs> I'm a shrine to my own yeah. press. I had to light a candle, and there was a dollar <laughs> box. <laughs> you know what I was like? <laughs> so, grew up in the D.C. area. Yep. Uh, what got you, what was the impetus to put your bags in the car and um, drive out here? Bad childhood, I guess. That's usually how it uh, how it goes. You know, I, it's weird. I never, I, I didn't think I was going to be a comedian. Um, that didn't really um, cross my mind until I was probably like 22 or 23. Um, I guess it was five years ago, and whatever that math is. Yeah. yeah so 23. I'm not 40. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so I actually thought I was going to be a well actress. I worked a lot as an actress when I was a kid. And then um, not worked in anything like theater and nonsense and then I um, was thought I was gonna be a journalist you know which is kind of like the other route of comedian because I feel like most comedians are like you know pissed off and want current events piss us off and we want to <laughs> you know what I mean just talk about her and then I but I became, was doing all these journalist uh, internships and studying to be a journalist and I realized I was like oh you just get to say this stuff you don't get to have an opinion about it so I was like, oh, this is kind of bullshit and I remember the first time I realized that I thought I had to be a stand-up is because I was um, reading, I had an internship at like a local DC, NBC, whatever news station. Yeah. And they let me read the teleprompter for like my reel or whatever. And I was reading it and I was like, you know, today, uh, you know, two kids got kidnapped and raped in a dumpster. And I was like laughing hysterically. Like, I thought it was so funny. And they showed like a photo of the kid. I was like, oh, who would want to rape him? Anyway, like I was laughing hysterically at all the tragic shit. And I was like, oh, this, this it's is not, not for me. It's not for me to be serious about horrible things. So you literally had not thought about it prior it to It hadn't me. crossed my mind. It, stand-up's not, it's so weird, because it's. I don't think it's something that crosses people's minds often. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think mm -hmm. you're not really given a choice with stand-up. It's mm -hmm. either, because after that moment, there was no other life really? in stand-up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's not like, and I and I never, it's not like you can't, you're not kind of a stand-up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not, uh, it's like maybe I'll, I'll be a lawyer or a stand-up. No, it's like if you're a stand-up, it's like your whole life and you're insane. Like you're just, it's, it's an, we're, our minds are just different than most people's. So yeah. you're going to do that, you know? Because, I mean, what we do for a living is literally the number one fear of most people. Yeah. Public speaking. Yeah. I mean, that's most people's biggest fear, yeah. you know? And I can't think of an equivalent to it. I mean, it would be like... You yeah, know I mean, it's because people come up to me after shows all the time. They're like, oh, I can never do that. Oh my god, that's and I'm like, well, what do you do? And one to this guy the other day said to me, he's like, oh, I'm a, a spinal surgeon. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh, you cut into people. Yeah. While they're <laughs> awake. Yeah. <laughs> you think my job's scary? Yeah. Like, can you imagine? So it's just so wild how what we do. It's just so yeah, um, really, so insane. Like spinal surgeon. Are you single or? Yeah, yeah. I know exactly. yeah. Right. Honestly, I would have said that, but surgeons just creep me out. That to yeah. me, the idea of cutting into someone is the creepiest. Yeah, thing yeah. Ever. He runs his fingernail across your skin. It's he's just like, like oh, oh guy, guy, yeah, yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. not gonna cut me while I'm sleeping, <laughs> I Like, now he's out of the kitchen. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would actually a plastic surgeon. Okay, that's we'll talk. yeah, yeah, we'll talk yeah, for yeah. Sure. Yeah. How has your material changed? Like more personal? Yes, or? completely. I would say more personal. I would say um, more specific. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, more, um, what is it, when you streamline or yeah. uh, more categorize. Like, I don't talk about everything anymore. When I first started, it's like, you're like, duh, my vagina, duh, yeah. airplanes, duh, my parents. And yeah. now I only really want to talk about two things, and that's sex and relationships. Right. And uh, that's, you're building a brand. That's ex I get yeah. by accident, I yeah. kind of am, but I just, I, I'm not ashamed that that's all that interests me. Right. That's right. all I want to talk about. Right. You know, so Louis C.K., um, who I quote his interviews often, um, said on a Canadian interview recently, he said um, that if you think about something more than three times a week, you have to write about it. Hmm. I don't think about airplane food more than three times. Right. I mean, I'm yeah. on planes four times a week, yeah. and I don't think about it three times a week. So right. it's like, you know what I mean? So it's just about what interests you and what That's true. You That's care a really good about. point. Mm -hmm. If you were to give yourself advice back, 
when you started, yeah. what would you tell yourself? Is always ask to go up early. I still mm. do it now and it pisses people off, but um, not to con necessarily, but bookers, because yeah. if you're headlining a show and you go up first, you're just kind of, you know, a lame, basically. <laughs> I'm so lame. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always ask to go up early um, so that you can get in and out, you know, because I also think that, you know, when you're hanging out, like I remember so many rooms that I used to do when I was first starting, it's like like the knitting factor, I remember, which is on Hollywood. Oh, mm-hmm. God, you would show up and you would be like, or Westwood, Bruco, which people still go to and I still go to to run new stuff. Um, is that you're like waiting there for two, three hours at a time in comics and you're talking yeah. to comics and it's just like, and all my friends are comics and a lot, but sometimes it's just like, da, 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 what are you doing? What are you booking? What are you doing? What are you yeah, doing? Da, da, yeah. da, da. And it's just like, it messes, I think, with your head and people get into this competitive, he has this, I should have this mentality when you really should just be like working on your material. So instead of spending that three hours just chatting about yeah. business or whatever, just write. Record set, sleep. Don't talk to the out. riffraff. Yes. Get in and get out. Be a bitch. Be a bitch. That's well, yeah. It, that's it what gets I... you into. We're in the Hollywood Hills, right? <laughs> I don't want to turn this camera around here so I can, you know. But there's a VCR right. Yeah, there is. A, there is that a. That is a VCR. There is a huge sure. Buddha. Yes. <laughs> in, <laughs> I'll let you know. There's a lot of religious artifacts. None of them traditional. Okay, so she's got the answer. A lot of you know, alternative A lot of alternative religions things. Going There's on. a lot of coexisting spiritually in here. A lot more pictures of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also. Exactly. We got a new religion. Which is that religion and it's yeah. Right. yeah. Like something that resonates with you about stand up. Uh-huh. Like every time you go up or every time you're developing material or, yeah. you know. One of my favorite pieces of advice is the more specific you are, mm. the more universal you are. Mm. Which I love because I feel like as comedians we're always like be like it's more like this and more like this but the more you just say I did this and I you know right. it just it forces you to get more personal mm-hmm. um, uh, also a Jay Leno quote um, which is if you keep forgetting to do it it's not funny <laughs> oh if you have to spend a lot of time memorizing it it's not funny right. so That's his whole good. thing is if you remember it it's funny so you have the best performance of your life what like five comedians do you respect enough to want to be in the back of the room to see the best of what you have. Um, but oddly, no one ever says this, but he I just did come across his work very young, um, was Paul Reiser. Mm. I loved Mad About You. Mm-hmm. I watch it constantly. He's, I feel like, very overlooked. Um, Attell, I, you know, I think most comics, you have him in there somehow because he's just so, like, he's so prolific and uh, so funny. <laughs> um, Louis C.K., definitely. Um, his work ethic is amazing. I mean, his stand-up outshines his work ethic, oddly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he, he works so hard. And it's funny because I remember one time I saw him at like a festival or something. And he was like, did it, or at a spot or something. And I was like, oh, I have to go. I have, you know, another spot. And then I have another spot after that. I was doing like three spots a night or something. And I was like, oh, I know. It's crazy. I do three spots a night. And he was like, no, that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. It just deadpan. He's like, no, that's what you have to do yeah, you know because yeah. I used to think because most people were like oh, I'll do two a week or whatever and I was like maybe I should do less and he was like no that's you have to do that mm-hmm. you know so um, his work ethic is just as inspiring as how good his stand up is um, I uh, love Stephen Wright and right yeah yeah I love Stephen Wright because I love jokes I love um, that's what I get to do on the roast you get to just like write jokes and play with the math of jokes. This was Matthew Gill for Back of the Room for Punchline Magazine. This is Whitney Cummings. She has a fantastic special. I've seen a lot of the material at the Comedy Store and it is awesome. Uh, It's August 21st. It's called Money Shot. Uh, Please set your DVRs. Also, you're going to be in my home city of Chicago. Zanies. Zanies, baby. You get to see it live and in, in color. I mean, don't be cheap. Get a date. Go there. You know, kind of thing. You can go by yourself. Just don't sit up front. Yeah, don't sit up front. Don't sit up front. Don't. You will... You, you, I don't have any new material. Yeah, <laughs> she's just going to all just gonna, crowd work. All, only crowd work for now. Yeah, and it's only going to be about physical, like things you can't change. Okay? Oh, completely. <laughs> you know. Um, but... <laughs> so anyways, uh, again, Matthew, go for Back to the Room with Whitney Cummings. Airs August 21st. Money Shot on Comedy Central. Thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. That's a good name for a special. Things you can't change. Yeah.